All right, they work. So to make a long story short, the electrical in this house has been a really big disaster. There's a uh, backup generator, an automatic backup generator, sub-panel. Um, there's another sub-panel here in the addition. Uh, some circuits are on the backup generator and there's some mixing of, of breakers and uh, there's some mismatch of uh, wire types with uh, uh, the correct amperage of breakers. There's uh, too many outlets uh, on a single circuit. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of things here. So uh, I'm slowly, as I renovate this house, I'm going to be replacing electrical. And what I chose to do down here is put the basement six, there's six outlets down here. Uh, I'm gonna put them all on a 20 amp, their own 20 amp breaker that's not on the backup generator. So uh, in the sub panel here. So there'll be, uh, we, if we wanna run an electric heater down here and the Xbox and uh, the TV, whatever else we have down here, we're not gonna have issues with breakers tripping and, and things like that. So uh, I will uh, take you through the process that I'm going to use here. I'm not a certified electrician. Uh, I'm just using uh, my experience, um, uh, referencing uh, codes and things like that online as well as a little bit of common sense, which I think can go a long way. I'm starting with a GFCI outlet. So this is the, the, the first outlet in, in the series here. I'm gonna be using a 20 amp GFCI and uh, that will protect the rest of the outlets in the circuit. So this is the first outlet in the circuit. Um, this wire will lead to the first outlet. Um, I have not run the wire yet from the panel into this box and that will provide power to the circuit. Uh, and then the GFCI will protect all of the, the rest of the outlets um, from here on out. So if you don't know about GFCIs, look it up online. Um, it's kind of an extra protection for uh, electrocution and, and, and all the other things, um, extra from the breaker itself. So that wire comes out of the, uh, the outlet that I just showed you is over there on the wall under the TV that uh, goes behind that wall and then comes out over here. And this is where I've started. So we'll start putting a few outlets along the walls here, uh, wherever the SSL family mom decides that we need them. And I still have a wall to build back here where I'll have an outlet in, I'm sure as well, so. All right, so we need to figure out where we're gonna put all the outlets down here. So SSL family mom, point them out for us. Um, and let's, okay, let's so figure it out. One here. Okay, right here. Or wait, maybe back. Maybe right there. On this side? Yeah. Hold it right here. Right there. Okay, so we've got our direction from the, the SSL family mom and um, I'm gonna get these put in. So I'm using a, a metal um, outlet box here instead of the, uh, the plastic ones. And this comes with a, a guide that's attached to it. And it has little curved uh, hooks here that wrap right around your two by four. That tells you the right distance to have here. So you got your half inch drywall will come uh, right up flush with that. Um, it's designed for that. And then uh, all you do is tap these, these little, um, little hooks in here and that'll hold it in place. And then you can come back and, and throw some nails in through, through the holes here. So, why am I using metal boxes? Well, I, I hate plastic, uh, especially with this stuff. I know that, that it definitely has its place. Um, if I were in a moist, wet basement, then you know I may not want to use metal because it may corrode or rust or something over time. Hopefully everything will be nice and dry down here, so I think these will be perfect. What ends up happening over time with uh, the cheap plastic ones, I can't say this for everyone, but is the plastic box screw holes right here, they end up getting stripped out. So you've got your outlet and these screws right here on each side, they screw into your, your box right here and here. And over time, you're pulling plugs in and out, you're wiggling them back and forth, you're, you're messing with this thing you know, all the time and you end up, the plastic just gets bent and gets worn out and then all of a sudden you pull this thing right out. You pull the outlet out and it gets loose. And you come back and you try to, to tighten the screw back in and, and it's stripped out. 
And so now you've got a plastic box inside the wall and you can't get it out very easily. It's hard to replace it with a new box because you can't get in through the wall. And uh, you, or you end up with a, just a loose outlet that you're messing with all the time. So these, these metal boxes work much better. They're not cheaper and they do require extra um, connectors and things like that to do it properly. But uh, I, I, in my opinion, this is the, the right way to do it and the better way to do it. So for uh, wiring here, we're using a 12 gauge wire. This is a 12-2, so um, that just means that it's 12 gauge and it has two wires in it plus the ground. They don't include that in the, in the two. Um, you'll also see white wire um, bundled the same way, and that is generally for your 15 amp circuits. The yellow uh, 12 gauge is generally for your 20 amp circuits, so that's what we'll be, be using for our, uh, our wiring here today. Okay, so unlike a, a plastic box, which just has wire entrances on the back, you have to knock these out on a metal box, and you have to install a connector. You can't just stuff the wires through here, which I've seen in this house in several different places, where they just pop the knockout through and just stuff the wires through. Well, you can't have, you should never have wire touching metal. So if we just, stuff these wires through here over time, outlets moving and people working in the box and different things, the wire can rub on these edges and cut through it and short out. So obviously that, you know, again, I don't need a, a, an electrical code to tell me that that's not a good idea to have wire rubbing on metal. So they sell little clamp connectors. Um, they just, very simple to install and this is the proper way to wire into a metal box. All right, so I'm gonna run, in this case, I'm gonna run two wires through the same clamp connector. And that should be just fine to do. Get them in there tight enough to hold it, but not smash the insulation off the wires. And now that outlet is, is roughed in and ready for drywall. pretty much it for for the rough electrical here everything's wired into the boxes and so once we get our drywall all set up here we will be able to uh, finish our, our outlets and, and get everything powered up so everything turned out pretty good I really do like these clamps here um, much better than anything else and this is what happens with people you know that just kind of throw things together stuff like this where they just ran the wire through the knockout and to me, I mean, this is, I, I don't know what the code is, but I can't imagine it would allow this. You never want metal edges on your wire. Um, as you're wiggling things around in here over the years, you're gonna wear through that and it's gonna cause a fire or something. So, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff that was in here that, uh, that I'm taking out and 
I just want things to be set properly and uh, you know, I want things to be long lasting. So hopefully the, the metal box is here and, and I'd actually, I wouldn't mind doing metal covers on all these too. Um, Cause I hate those plastic covers that crack and stuff. So, but uh, this should be pretty good. Okay, so we have our, uh, a lot of our finishing touches done here. And so we're ready to kind of button up the electrical. So we're installing a GFI or GFCI outlet. These are all 20 amp outlets on a 20 amp circuit with 12 gauge wire. Uh, and so uh, the, these GFCIs have to be installed in a certain way. So you want the first outlet in your series, uh, in your, your plug circuit here to be the GFCI outlet. Um, so this is my feed coming from my circuit breaker. So that's going to go on the line side of the outlet here. I've got my uh, hot and neutral, hot and neutral here, and uh, that'll get plugged in there, ground on the bottom. And then my load side, the bottom ones here, they're labeled load. This will get wired out to the next outlet in line here. So we're going to go ahead and get this wired up. I found this really cool little tool. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to this. I can't remember the name of it. Um, the official name of it. It's made by a company called Ideal. And uh, I'll put a link over on Amazon. These are pretty cheap. But this has been the most handy little tool that I have ever had. It does everything you need for wiring. So it's got a little splitter here to get the, um, co the uh, Romex covering off. And it also has a stripper, has a cutter for the, uh, the shielding. And it also uh, will bend your wires into a loop to put around your screws here. So I'll show you how it works. We're just going to start on the end of the wire here and just start feeding it through all the way up into the outlet box. Then you can peel your shielding right off. Isn't that great? Makes it so much easier. I, I've used to using a razor knife to do that. Now it doesn't have an actual wire cutter, so I'll use my regular cutters for that. I want these to be long enough to easily get access to my outlet, but not too long. I don't want too much wire in the box here. It does have strippers on here as well. So you just take that and put it in the, it's got a V groove on the back side here. We'll stick that in. I'm just gonna spin it around a few times. And pull that shielding off. And then it also has a spot to create your loop. So you just stick it through here. Twist this down. Pretty handy. My favorite part of this thing is just being able to take the shielding off these wires. Man, is that, is that handy. Look at that. Makes that so much faster. These, these little, uh, little wire strippers have been handy too. These are old ones. I've had these forever. So they work pretty good too. So for the ground here on this one, I, I used a small jumper just so I'd have to try to jam all the ground wires in the, the outlet terminal. Uh, I'm just gonna use a little piece of ground wire here and then we'll wire nut them together. Nice and tight, plug doesn't wiggle. I'm pulling things in and out, it's gonna stay on there nice and tight, so that should be good. We'll move on to the next one in the line here. Okay, so we've got all of our outlets put in here. Everything's all hooked up, so we're gonna get a new breaker put in. So all the, the new outlets that I put in are gonna be on their own 20 amp uh, breaker here out of this panel. And uh, this is a sub panel coming in from our main panel. This was an addition. So uh, I also have a backup generator circuit coming in here. 
and I'm not sure how it's all wired. So I'm going to shut all the backup generator circuits off and shut our main off here. And then we'll have to do some testing to make sure this thing is not live in any way. I'm going to test this. I want to make sure that from our hot here, we don't have any any current. And of course, I know everything turned off, so that's good. Test over to this side. Everything looks to be dead. All right, I'm just gonna get my my wire fed in through one of these clamps at the top. I know you probably can't see it, but you just uh, just loosen the screws on one of these clamps and. Get it kind of fed in here. All right, I'm gonna use my handy little tool here to get this sheathing all taken off here. All right, get our ground added in here. All right, we'll get our white wire hooked up here. Should be a live circuit once we fire everything back up here make sure all our connections are nice and secure we'll put our cover back on and start flipping some breakers on here all right we'll start with our main breaker up on the other panel all right, breaker's on up on the other panel, so we'll go ahead and flip on our breaker here. And then let's flip on our new circuit. All right, here's our first uh, GFCI outlet. Let's test it out. All right, we have power. Well, that's it. We have successfully made a, uh, a 20 amp circuit here in the, in the new living area or basement area, whatever you want to call it. Uh, all the outlets are working properly. We've got everything upgraded now, so I won't have any more tripped breakers down here. I can run the, the heater that we have and uh, the Xbox and the TV and all the office equipment that'll be down here and lights and all the other stuff without worrying about anything. So uh, I am not an electrician. I've, I've said that many times before. I'm uh, fairly amateur. All this stuff is just very basic that I've done. Um, so hopefully you can follow on with what I've done and, and, and copy it if you're looking to do something like this. Um, everything I've done here ha should have should be to code in, in Michigan at least um, from what I understand and what I know. Um, but of course, before you do anything like this, you want to uh, make sure you look up your local clothes, make sure you feel comfortable with what you're doing. And if you don't call somebody else, hire somebody to do it. So, uh, that's the, the safety spiel. But, uh, if you guys have questions or comments, please throw them below. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. It's a late night, so I'm going to, I'm ready to get some sleep. But, uh, as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.